Hi, my name is Andrew Sadovoy. Welcome to Week 8 Supplemental Functions and Lambdas for the course in Introduction to Interactive Programming in Python by Joe Warren, John Greiner, Stephen Wong, and Scott Rixner. So, uh, as we learned in the lecture, functions are actually first-class members in Python, and this has a far-reaching far implications. Um, uh, functions are the single most powerful abstraction in programming. Um, Lambdas are an expression that results in a callable object, so it results in a function. Uh, to understand what this means uh, for functions to be first class members and to understand lambdas, we must first better understand expressions and values. So we've seen plenty of values, ints, stirs, floats, lists, dicts, sets, tuples, and lots of other stuff. These are all values. Objects are also values. Expressions are the combination of one or more values with zero or more operations in some meaningful way. Expressions are evaluatable, if you will, meaning they can be replaced with some simpler form. Values are expressions that evaluate to themselves and variables are expressions that evaluate to the value stored in the variable. Functions take values as parameters and return a value. But what does that really mean? If we look at the function definition structure, we see that it takes a name, a list of zero or more parameters, sorry, excuse me, it has a name, it has zero or more uh, parameters and it has a body. The function's name is just a name like we like we use for variables or classes or any other thing. Uh, the list of parameters are variables that will be filled later and uh, the function either returns a value explicitly using a return statement or it implicitly returns none. So all of this is old news. However, you may not have thought about this. First of all, the function's name is really just a variable and the function's body is one or more statements including zero or more return statements. Um, recall that a function that does not return something explicitly returns none implicitly. From an external perspective then, uh, the function's body can be thought of as an expression that evaluates to the function's return value. So as an aside, each operation in an expression is governed by specific rules about the type, quantity, and order of the values it can be used with. The same symbol can be used in, to represent different operations. For example, the plus symbol can be used in several ways. One way is with two numbers. Another way is with two strings. In the first case, the result of evaluating the expression is the value equal to the sum of the two numbers. In the second case, the result of evaluating the expression is the concatenation of the two strings. Thus, the same symbol, plus, represents two different operations, sum or concatenation, depending on the context. In this way, we can think of each operation in an expression as a function that takes some values and returns a value. Earlier, I said that a function's name is a variable. What do we assign to that variable? Essentially, an expression. So sure, a function's body can contain statements and those statements aren't necessarily expressions and they can change the environment and have side effects. But as I said earlier, the body of a function appears from the outside to be an expression. So a function is a variable that is assigned an expression that can be evaluated. But wait. Normally, when we assign an expression to a variable, the value stored in the variable is the result of evaluating the expression, not the expression itself. So what is a function then? Well, put simply, a function is a stored expression. It is a way of deferring the evaluation of expression until later. So if a function is a variable, that means that it evaluates the value stored inside of it. Okay. That value is an object that is callable. Let's look at something that isn't callable. So, 
Here we have x equals 4. And now I'm going to try and call x. And when I do, we'll reset that, we see an error. We see type error, number object, is not callable. OK, so there's this concept of something that is callable. OK. So if an object is callable, you can call it. To do so, you put an open parenthesis, followed by zero or more expressions, separated by commas, followed by a close parenthesis. That's not, this is not new news. We've, we've seen, the, seen and done this plenty in our code. So, um, but just explicitly, that's what a function call is. Okay. So a callable object is a value, just like other objects. And because it is a value, we can do with it all the things we can do with other values. So we can store it in variables. We can use it in expressions. We can store it in collections, such as lists and dicks. Uh, we can pass it to functions. We can return it from functions. And last but not least, we can provide it as the result of evaluating an expression. So if a callable can be the result of an expression, the next question is, what expression evaluates to a callable? And you might think that the usual function definition would be such an expression. Sadly, function definitions are not expressions. They are statements. However, remember, variables are expressions. Also, function names are just variables. Therefore, a function name is an expression that evaluates to a callable. But we already knew that. Are there any other expressions that evaluate to a callable? Yep. The first is a class name. This is yet another variable that contains a callable object. We know this because we instantiate a class by calling a callable object stored in the class name. Here's an example. I'll create class foo and define init in it. And we'll just pass. And now we will say x is equal to foo. And we will call x and set value y equal to x called. Let's see if that works. Hmm. Ah. Oops. That works just fine. And we can print y. Okay, so what did we do here? We defined class foo, okay, and then we assigned the value stored in foo into x. And then we called x, and we assigned the result to y. And that result that we can see here is a foo object. Okay, so class names are, are variables that store callables, just like function names. Okay. So are there any other expressions that evaluate to a callable? Hmm. Yes, there is. The lambda expression. This is an expression that starts with the keyword lambda, followed by zero or more parameter names, comma separated, followed by a colon, and followed by the body. The result of evaluating the lambda expression is a callable value. Okay. When called, the body is evaluated using any parameters defined in the lambda. So it's just like a function in that way. Okay. Uh, it's just slightly different syntax. So it's exactly like a function that we've already seen, except it has no name. Okay. The body of a function is actually one or more statements. But like I said, you can think of, an ex of uh, the body as an expression that evaluates the return value. Unlike regular function definitions, however, lambda expressions cannot contain statements in their body. The body of a lambda is always an expression. You also can't have side effects in the lambda, so you can't, for example, have print statements in there. But you can call functions from within the body of a lambda, and those functions can have side effects. So, for example, they can print. Um, you use lambda expressions inside other expressions to avoid having to define a function elsewhere in order to be able to use it in that expression. 
Uh, so this is useful when you don't intend to use that function anywhere else. You only intend to use it in that specific expression. And that's really all there is to say about lambdas. Once you understand uh, what expressions are and how they get used, the concept of a lambda makes perfect sense and um, doesn't really require a lot of explanation. We know what a function is and we know what an expression is and a lambda is just an expression that returns a callable. So it's that simple. I hope this is useful um, and please post any questions in the comments and I can uh, I can do a follow-up. Thanks for watching.